What's going on guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how to set up the DS18B20 digital temperature sensor with a Raspberry Pi. So the things that you're going to need for this build um, include a Raspberry Pi, it can be of any flavor, 0, Pi 3, um, 0W, whatever you have. You're going to need um, a set of jumper cables, in this case I have a female to male set of three jumper cables and then you're also going to need a DS18B20 digital sensor probe so this one comes with a breakout board I highly recommend getting this piece because then you won't need to you know attach a resistor and breadboard it's a lot cleaner of a solution um, and it this particular sensor also came with this wiring harness so with all that said let's go ahead and get it wired up so the first thing you can see here um, on the sensor there will be three wires you have a yellow a red and a black wire so on this little breakout board you're presented with D DAT which I believe stands for data VCC and ground so ground is the black wire um, red wire plugs into the VCC terminal and then the yellow cable plugs into the data um, terminal right here so just go ahead Put, um, plug those in and screw them down so it's tight. Go ahead and get the um, attached wiring harness and then also plug them in in a similar fashion so you want um, the colors to be the same so for example here uh, I know it's hard to see but uh, the yellow cable is plugged into data red VCC and um, black into ground and and then we'll just take our GPI uh, GPIO jumper cable here and plug it to the end so for example I'm just gonna pick um, I'm just gonna make yellow yellow so that's data and then I have green which will be um, green will be VCC which will be in the middle and then blue will be ground so that, now that that's set up, we have everything uh, wired up except for the Pi, so we just need to hook it to the Pi now. So if I remember correctly, blue was um, blue was ground, so that's easy. That's the third pin from the top, always ground. Uh, VCC, which is red, right? VCC red is the green cable so this goes to the 3.3 volt GPIO which is the first pin on the bottom row and for the data signal pin which is this yellow wire we're just gonna pick a generic GPIO pin so let's call it um, 17 which is the sixth on the bottom one two three four five six so there you go, that's it. That's pretty much um, all you need to do to wire it up to the Pi. Um, a note on the sensor here, you can see that it's um, heat shrink and there's this metal cover. I believe it's also waterproof, so you should be good to submerge it in water. I don't know about how hot the water can be. I would say probably... Um, not boiling water but it can handle you know somewhat lukewarm or, or hot water um, if you needed a high temperature sensor I think they have a ceramic um, temperature probe but that's um, something for a later video so now that we have all that set up let's go ahead and head over to the computer and check out some of the code I lied we actually have to do a bit of setup before we can get to the code so what you're gonna need to do is make uh, an edit to your um, boot config configuration file. So to do that, we're going to type in sudo sudo nano slash boot dash config dot txt. Um, you're going to add a line. I've already done it, but just scroll all the way to the bottom and add this line: dt overlay equals w1 dash gpio. Um, save it. So control x. Um, and then hit yes, and then uh, right after you do that, just do a sudo reboot. I've already done that, um, but you're gonna need to do that for the changes to take place. Once that's done, um, 
go ahead and type sudo mod probe w1-gpio and then sudo mod probe w1-therm. Uh, once that's done and set up, we can go ahead and navigate to that specific sensor. So type in cd slash sysbus w1 devices and then ls and you should see uh, <clears throat> 28 dash um, like this serial number for your sensor it probably will be different but as long as you see this um, you should be good to go so once you see that we can uh, navigate to the to that specific instance right here so CD 28 LS and then if we type cat w1 underscore slave we should see this output which means our sensor is working so that's a good sign so with all that said and done um, you know that your Raspberry Pi is properly configured and it's seeing the um, DS18 V20 sensor so now we could move on to the code so you're gonna want to open up PyCharm um, the and look at the script real quick so what I have here is uh, <coughs> essentially a Python script which will read the temperature and output it so I'll just run you through what we have here real quick so it's made up of I believe four functions so the first function here sensor this is what picks up that serial number value which is right here um, so that way you don't have to type in anything it'll find it dynamically if you have multiple devices too it'll it should find all of them um, I think with the DS 18 B 20 you can read multiple sensors in parallel so that's like uh, really that's really cool but it's not gonna be covered in this tutorial um, this um, read function is what actually goes through and will parse the data and output Celsius and Fahrenheit. It'll return the Celsius and Fahrenheit uh, values and then the loop function is what actually just prints it to the screen. So with, with all that covered, let's go ahead and run the script. So all the files will be on the website and the links will be in the description as well. So. Just FYI. So now if I go to my Pi and go back to my home, I've already uploaded it here. So Python DS18B20 Pi and run. Hit enter. So you can see that every second it's just posting the current value in Celsius and Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna really quickly um, put the probe into a cup of ice water and we should see the change occur. So as you can see, it's dropping quite rapidly right here from 10 degrees Celsius and it's currently at six degrees now. So we know that's working. So that's pretty much it. It's um, pretty straightforward to get the DS18B20 sensor up running with the Pi. It's pretty useful because it's waterproof um, and it can handle a sort of decent range of temperature. And as for accuracy, I'm not really sure. I think it it performs a little bit better than D the DHT11, which I um, have a tutorial in a previous video. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you like the channel, leave a like or a comment, and uh, I hope you subscribe and stay tuned for more content in the future. Thanks, guys.